if you've bought a laptop in the last three to four years, you're probably impressed by how long the battery lasts, how fast and powerful it is, and how few ports it has. In some cases, like with Apple, this minimalism has been taken to the extreme, as always. I have this MacBook Pro M1, which my sister has lent to me for an undetermined amount of time. It's great, fast and has practically infinite battery life, which I love. But it only has three ports in total, an audio jack, which is great, and two USB-C ports, that's all. If you've ever used a PC in your life, you know this isn't enough. Maybe Tim Cook only uses iPhones and iPads, so he doesn't realize it, who knows? So, if you have this kind of laptop, you need a USB-C hub or a docking station. Some are cheap, like this one I bought for 10 euros at Carrefour, <laughs> others are ridiculously expensive, like the one I reviewed right here. But this one offers charging, a 4K 6 years HDR HDMI port, a gigabit Ethernet port, two USB 3.0 ports, two USB-C ports and even a full M2 slots, all for under 100 euros. This is the Pool W Top USB-C hub. It offers everything you need to turn your laptop into a full desktop setup. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to the channel, thank you. Let's begin with the materials. The sides of the stands, as you can clearly hear, are completely metal, while the middle is rubber, so it can close and grip your laptop securely when connected. Premium materials for a premium price, off to a great start. Another thing I love about this design is how it grips the laptop. With this simple yet effective mechanism, you can accommodate a laptop as thick as 3.5 cm and if you stretch it a little bit, also 4 cm. Like, this means that you can fit a Mac Mini inside of it, and you don't have to worry about your device getting scratched, thanks to the rubber bands on top that prevent metal-to-metal -metal contact. As for connectivity, it has almost everything you could want in a product like this. You can connect your mouse, your keyboard, your power, your Ethernet, a screen, and an NVMe SSD. There's also a full SD card reader, a micro SD card reader, another USB-C port for connecting your laptop, and a power delivery USB-C port that supports up to 100 watts of input and 85 watts of output. However, if you have a gaming laptop, it might not be enough, but if you have a Mac, that's more than enough. The only measure port missing is an audio jack, otherwise it would be nearly perfect. Maybe they didn't place it because almost every laptop has one inside of it, but still, I would have preferred to see it on the docking station. One thing I'm not a fan of is that there's not a single port on the front of the docking station, as you can see. This is great for hiding cables, but it means I can't use a wireless mouse, because the signal gets blocked by this massive piece of metal, obviously. I understand that having all the parts on one side makes it cheaper to produce, and therefore cheaper for us consumer. But if you use a wireless mouse, keep this in mind. I want to take a moment to highlight the HDMI port. Finally, a docking station that does what it says. There are many apps, some even more expensive, like this one I reviewed a few months ago, that claim to support 4K 6 years, but requires some pretty sketchy drivers in Tarling Cantonese, so you have to guess what you're installing while doing it, and even then, 4K doesn't work at all, or it works at 30 years, but 30 years sucks. This app not only outputs 4K 6 years, but also supports HDR, which makes a huge difference in video quality. If you've ever tried HDR, you know it. Lastly, but definitely not least, is the M2 port. This is a lifesaver for me, since I only have 256 gigabytes of storage on my Mac, so I desperately need extra space. Another plus is that you can use double-sided NVMe drives. I tried inserting my Kingston KC3000 2TB NVMe, what a long name for an SSD, and it was recognized without any issues whatsoever. However, the speed isn't as fast as a typical NVMe. In writing, you get just over 700 megabytes a second, while in reading it's around 650 megabytes a second. Which is a bit confusing by itself, I was expecting the opposite, but still, it's more than fast enough for the storage. The NVMe is cooled through an included thermal pad, which dissipates heat to the chassis of the docking station itself, so it doesn't run too hot. 
All things considered, I really like this product. It usually costs around 100 euros, but I've noticed that it often has a 10 euros discount, so you'll likely pay around 90 euros, which is reasonable for a docking station this capable with an M2 slot and an integrated stand, especially when compared to other options we are, which are often more expensive and of questionable quality, both material-wise and software-wise. You'll find all the links down below so you don't have to look for yourself. Thank you so much for sticking until the end of the video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It's a free way to support me immensely. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!